All right, I am one classes. Today we are talking about congruent figures. So let's just get right into it. Um, so congruent figures, the definition, when every part of one figure is congruent to every corresponding part of another figure, we say they are congruent. So remember congruent means the same or equal. So everything in the shapes are the same size, um, angles, length, uh, side lengths, everything is the same. So if you look here, here's a bunch of congruent figures. Notice that they're flipped and rotated and they don't have the same orientation. That's fine. It's still the same shape. They are congruent figures. They're the same size and shape. Here, these are not congruent. Obviously, this one doesn't look like the other two. Um, these two look like they're, they're kind of the same, but this one is smaller. So these are not congruent. So when we say a, the figures are congruent, they are exactly the same size and shape. Um, let's talk about some notation things. So uh, congruent statement, um, you write the court, uh, you're gonna write corresponding vertices in order. So let me uh, label some things here. So this is gonna be triangle ABC. You can make that B look better. A, B, C, and this triangle will be, uh, we'll go X, Y, Z. All right, so these are congruent. Um, I'm gonna put some congruency arcs and tick marks in here. So um, when the angles are congruent, so angle A is congruent to angle X. All right, angle B, I'm gonna put two tick marks or two arcs in angle B to show that it's different than angle A. So two arcs in angle Y, so B is congruent to Y. And then angle C is congruent to angle Z. And what we do when we write that out, um, for angles, use the, the angle symbol. So we can say angle A is congruent to angle X. And then we have angle B is congruent to angle Y. And then angle C is congruent to angle Z. Right. Then there's the sides. So I'm going to mark the sides in blue. So we have AB is congruent to XY. They're the same. They're corresponding. BC is congruent to YZ. And then AC is congruent to uh, XY. And so to write those, it is a triangle. Oh, not A yet. No, nope, we're not on segments yet. So AB segment AB is congruent to segment XY. Segment BC is congruent to segment YZ. And then uh, set, uh, segment AC is congruent to segment XZ. So those are the congruency statements for the individual parts. So there's six parts to these triangles, all right? Three side or three angles, three sides, so six parts total. Um, to write a congruency statement for the triangle, we would say triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle X, Y, Z, all right? That's pretty easy, right? What you want to make sure when you write a congruency statement is that you are the, the angles or the vertices that correspond to one another, you're listing them in the same order. So if I want to write this triangle ABC in a different order, so let's say I want to get cute with it and say it's triangle CAB, because I like to spell words, say triangle CAB. I can't just write out that it's congruent to triangle XYZ. I need to write it in the same order. So I did CAB. C corresponds to Z, so I have to write the Z first. A corresponds to X, so I'd have to write the X next. And then B corresponds to Y, so it's Y. So you need to write it listed in order that they correspond, all right? And it matches up with the angles, all right? You can tell when the diagrams are marked off by looking at the, the congruency arcs, what corresponds to what. So just for example, what doesn't work out if I had um, 
let's say triangle B A C is congruent to triangle. If I just did the normal and alphabetical order, this would be a no go. That'd be an incorrect congruent statement because B here does not correspond to X down here. They're not the same angle of the triangles, all right? Um, so let's look at that. We're gonna do a mashing congruent statement. So W, B, U, all right? W is listed first. So W has one arc. Over here, the triangle, the angle of the one arc is T. So I gotta put T in there. Then it goes to V. So V has two arcs. S has two arcs. So T, S, and then R is left over. U and R um, correspond. All right. So just make sure you are listing them in corresponding order. So let's look at this one. A, K, L. So A um, is this top. So A, K, L is this top triangle. So A uh, corresponds to itself. So it'll be A. So then K is next. So I got to look at K has the two arcs. B has the two arcs. So it'll be B. And then C is left over. All right. Uh, next, uh, same thing. You got to look. Uh, we have XWV. XWV. So X corresponds to itself. They both have the, the one tick mark. W has two. Down here, E has two, so those correspond, so I need to put the E next. And then V has three, D has three, so X, E, D. All right, so now let's look at corresponding parts. So we're not doing the whole uh, triangle, we're just doing parts of the triangle now. So segment WV is congruent to what segment? So if you look at this, um, if you mark things off, it, it um, things that are equal to each other. So we have uh, L and X, V and V is W. I should have done W first, but that's okay. So W, um, if you mark off the sides, so WV corresponds to itself here. So if we have it all marked off here, we can see Corresponding, but what is the easiest thing to do is actually to look at the congruent statements. So WV, what's it congruent to? Look at the congruent statement. WV is listed first here. What's listed first here? WV. So WV corresponds to itself. So WV is congruent to segment WV. Let's look at another example. All right, so segment IJ, all right, if I mark off the diagram um, following this, so H is first, then U, so H corresponds to U, I corresponds to V, so those are congruent, and then J corresponds to W, so those are congruent. Um, you can mark off the sides from there, so I to L, it's one arc to two arcs, one arc to two arcs, so these are equal or congruent. Two to three is I to J, two to three over here, and then three to one, so all marked off. That's what it looks like. So I, J, all right, I, J corresponds to this one here with the two tick marks. And then, so if you look here, IJ is listed in the first two spots. UV is listed in the first two spots. So there's a couple different ways. Segment IJ is congruent to segment UV. All right, two more. One with an angle. So uh, complete the congruent statement. Angle XVW. So let's actually mark off the diagram real quick so you, we can see. Um, And actually, you know what? Let's do this without marking anything off just by looking at the congruence. So X, V, W. So it goes X to V to W. So we go over here, it'd be D to E to V. Same pattern. So D, E, V. So let's um, mark this off so we can see if we're right. So uh, w corresponds to V in the other one. So W and V 
x corresponds to d and v corresponds to e so v in this one corresponds to e in this one and then you can mark off the angles in between so one to two one to two two arcs to three arcs two arcs to three arcs one to three arcs one to three arcs so we can mark those off with congruence tick tick marks um but let's look w v x so w v actually no that's wrong it's not really x v w so x v w so to mark it off here so d e v we can see and notice we did that just by looking at the order it's listed all right so let's do one more like that uh triangle stu um so we're looking at angle stu all right this one's actually pretty simple because it lines up so it goes s to t to u s to t to u so s to t to j so it's s t j just need to list it off and we can uh real quickly mark off so we can see uh, s corresponds to s t corresponds to t and then u corresponds to j and then mark off the um, sides that match up And if we look, so S to T to U. So S T U is the same as S T J. There we go. And we can see that they, that angles, those bangles have the two tick marks, All right? So um, that's all there is to this lesson. Uh, finish up the assignment. Let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, we'll see you next time.